Hey, it's Mrs. Harbin. We're on video notes 11.3. You've got to be able to do titration and calculate. Know the chemistry behind titration and why it works. Do some vocab and terminology. And that's what we're going to do. All right. So, chapter 19, sections 4 and 5, cover all of this stuff in depth. Okay. So, and there's some good pictures and there's some fish too. All right. Can't go wrong with fish. All right, so what do we got going on here? A titration. A titration is a technique. Okay, it's a technique. And that technique, tech, technique, is used to find out um, unknown concentrations of acids or unknown concentrations of bases based on other stuff we know. Or you can figure out volumes too. So you're going to sort of recognize this formula that we use. So this is the calculation for the titration technique. X times MAVA equals X times MBVB. A stands for acid, B stands for base. X on the acid side is the number of H pluses. Okay. X on the base side is the number of OH minuses. Okay. So if we multiply the concentration, which is moles per liter, times a volume, which is liters, look what happens. We get moles. So over here, we're finding out that the moles of acid equals the moles of base in this formula, and that's what happens in a titration. You use acid or base to titrate the other one, and you stop titrating when they equal each other. Okay, And so they're neutralized. So make sure you write this formula down. Make sure you know that H, H plus is, goes in for X on the acid side. The number of OH minuses goes in for X on the base side. M is the molarity and V is volume. So um, in this technique, we use this instrument called a burette. I said a burette. You say a burette. Some people don't like to pronounce that word. Anyway, so we have either acid or base here and acid or base here. Now, in this case, this is acid, and we don't know the concentration. This is base, and we do know the concentration. So we add one to the other to find out which concentration we uh, are missing. Okay, Burettes are good instruments because they read to the second decimal place every time you read the volume. Okay, And then we use those indicators so that the solution changes color when the moles of H plus and the moles of OH minus are equal. So that's the end point of the titration. So titration is a technique. We're trying to find out something we don't know about an acid or a base, and we know something about the other thing. Okay, What chemical reaction allows us to do that? It's called the neutralization reaction, which is just a fancy way of saying acid, base, double replacement. Acid plus base, it's a double replacement like we talked about earlier in the year, but it's a special double replacement because it's an acid and a base reacting. Okay. So um, when, when we talk about neuter, we talk about taking away the identity of something. When you neutralize, you take away the identity of an acid or a base. If you have an acid and it's neutralized, it's not an acid anymore. If you have a base and it's neutralized, it's not a base anymore. HF is an acid. NaOH is a base. So what will the product be? Neither. So let's see what we get. Do the old switcher, the H, changes places with the Na. So now we have H with OH, that's water and Na with F, and sodium is a plus one from the periodic table, fluoride is a negative one, you get NaF, okay? So when you mix an acid with a base, it does a double replacement, you'll get water, water, which is neutral, neutral water, and a salt, and this salt is sodium fluoride. And then after you correctly write the formulas for the um, product, products, you have to put in coefficients, one Na, one A, good, F is good, 1, 2, 1, 2, and 1, 0. Oh. So it is balanced with all coefficients 1. Is the product an acid or a base? Nope. Neither. Because the products of neutralization are salt and water. Okay. A salt and water. Now this isn't table salt. This is sodium fluoride salt. The products of neutralization are salt and water because it's a double replacement. And you neutralize or take away the properties of the acid and the base. Okay. So here's some examples. Acid or base? Acid. Acid or base, base, okay, acid, base. So um, we do the double replacement. So the H goes with the OH, and you get water. And the NO3 goes with the K. Periodic table K is plus 1. Nitrate's negative 1, so you get KNO3. So you get water and potassium nitrate salts. 
And then you look at coefficients, 1, 1, that's good, 1, 1, 1, 2, 1, 2, NO3, NO3, balanced. Okay. Acid, base, all right. So the H goes with the OH and you get water. And then you get salt. So we have Fe and NO2. Now I know Fe is a plus 2 charge, so I didn't know it because two hydroxides went with it. So it was OH and OH, they each had a negative charge, so Fe must have been a plus 2. Nitrite has a negative 1 charge because it's with the plus 1 H. So I got to get the Fe, which has a positive 2 charge, with two nitrites, NO2, 2. And then that's the salt. So this is the salt. And then I look at coefficients. 1, 1. Okay. 1, 2. Oh, I need two nitrites. So I need a 2 there. 2. And then I'm going to need two there. And let's see. 1, 2, 3, 4. 1, 2, 1, 2. Okay. And so now it's balanced with the coefficients. So what you notice every time is your acid plus your base gives you water. You can write down H2O right away, folks. And then you make sure you cancel the charge on your salt. And these are called neutralization reactions. Neutralization. Okay. And neutralization makes neutral water and a neutral salt. Or a salt that's from the other ions. Okay, so now we can use, put those two things together and see what happens. Okay, so it takes 54 milliliters of 0.1 molar NaOH to neutralize 125 milliliters of HCl solution. What is the concentration of the HCl? Okay, so H plus MAVA equals OH minus MBVB. Okay. So H plus, well let's look, here's HCl. How many H's in HCl? One. So H plus equals 1 because HCl has 1. Okay. MA is the molarity of the acid, concentration of acid. What is the concentration? That's what we're looking for. Okay. Volume of acid. Let's see. Volume of acid. 125 milliliters equals 0.125 liters. All right. The other side, we have OH minuses equal, let's see. Here's our base. There's 1. OH minus equals 1 because NaOH has one. That's how I decide. The molarity of the base, concentration of the base is 0.1 molar. All right. And the volume of the base is how much do we use? 54 milliliters, which is 0.054 liters. Okay. Then we just plug and chug. We have one times X times 0.125 liters equals one times 0.1 times 0.054 liters, 0.1 molar. Okay, to solve for x, I got to divide by 1 and 0.125. That cancels. Divide by 1 and 0.125. And that cancels, and we're going to be left with molar. And I find out that x equals 0 .0, 0 0.054 times 0.1 divided by, and I get 0.04. 3, 2. And that's going to be molar. That's the only unit left. So H equals um, the concentration of HCl, which equals, I said X, I mean H, 0 0.0432 molar. So that's the unknown concentration. So you use titration to get that data. All right, so it takes 50 milliliters of 0.5 molar KOH to completely neutralize 125 milliliters of sulfuric acid. What is the concentration of H2SO4? All right, so we're going to be using... H plus MAVA equals OH minus MBVB and H plus equals this time we gotta be careful equals two. Why? H2SO4. Two H's in there. MA is the molarity of the acid, that's what we're looking for. VA is the volume of the acid, 0.125 liters. Okay. OH minus is gonna be equal to one. Why? KOH, there's one OH in there. Okay. Molarity of the base is 0.5 molar, and the volume of the base is 0 0.050 liters. All right, so plug and chug. 2 times X times 0 0.125 liters equals 1 times 0.5. Oh, I said times. I mean, I said times, but 0.5 molar times 0 0.050 liters. Solving for x, I can divide by 2 and 0 0.125 liters, and all of this goes away. So x equals 
this is 2 on the bottom, 0.125, and then you plug in your calculator, look, bye bye liters, it was fun, so 0.5 times 0 0.05 divided by 2 divided by 0 0.125, you get 0 0.1 molar H2SO4. So where do all of those numbers come from? Let me take you back. Okay, so then we had volume in here, volume, and we don't know the concentration, and then we have volume in here, and we do know the concentration. So that's where all that comes from, and it depends what acid and base you use. So that's where the data comes from, that technique. Okay. And those are the titration calculations. Okay, definition, buffer. You may have heard of buffers. Buffers, you have some in you. Okay. What do buffers do? Well, they reduce the effect of adding acid or base. So if I have a solution with a buffer in it, then and I try to change its pH, it's a lot harder to do because the buffer keeps the pH constant. So if I add acid to a buffer solution, uh, or if I add acid in general, remember with the aliens, you can make the pH go down. But if there's a buffer in that solution, then the pH stays constant, or it changes very little. Now, what if I have a solution and I start adding base to it? Well, then the pH should go up to greater than four, or towards 14. But if I have a buffer in the solution, then the pH is going to stay pretty constant. Okay, so buffers um, reduce the effect of adding acid or base. Okay, so if you were in the alien juice bar and you were trying to make the pH go up or down to make it acid or base, if there was a buffer in that drink, then you wouldn't be able to change the pH. Okay, so a buffer has two parts. A buffer has an acid and a base in it, so that one partner takes care of the H's, all right, and one part takes care of the base, all right, the OH part. So, like, look at that dog. He's buffer than my dog. I don't have a dog, but look at those muscles. All right, anyway. Um, so, in a buffer, there's acid and base already in the container. Okay. So, this if this is a buffer, and then you try to add H+, plus, then the buffer grabs the H+. Plus. If you try to add OH-, minus, part of the buffer grabs the OH-, minus so that the pH does not change. All right. So, a buffer is does not allows... Sorry, a buffer, when you add acid or base to a buffer solution, pH stays constant. Where might you have that? Well, okay, here's an example. Here's an acid. It's going to be a weak acid, and um, this is going to be a base. They're in the same container. So this is an example of a buffer system because it has both acid and base. Now, if I add H plus to this container, it will react with the F minus to keep it neutral, to keep it um, constant pH. Okay. What if I add OH minus to this? Well, then it's going to act with react with the H plus um, neutralizes neutralizes OH minus, so the pH stays constant. pH stays constant. So buffers oh, I can't spell constant. Buffers keep the pH constant because they have two parts, an acid and a base in them. Okay. So if you try to add H plus, it doesn't work. If you try to add OH minus, it doesn't work because the buffer takes care of both of them. All right, where do you have a buffer? In your blood, there's a buffer system because your pH needs to be close to 7, a little bit over, okay, or else your cells die. But if there's a buffer system, yay, yay, buffers in blood, buffers in blood. And what do buffers do? Keep pH from changing. No change in pH. Even if you add acid to your blood, it stays constant pH if you had base. Okay. All right. So next vocab word is anhydride. Anhydride means without water. What? Anhydride means without water. Acids and bases technically are always dissolved in water. But if it's not dissolved in water, it can't be an acid or base because technically it has to be dissolved in water. So, there are some chemicals, like metals with oxygen and non-metals with oxygen, that are called anhydrides. Okay, so metal oxides are called, they're called base anhydrides, anhydrides. Bases without water, because once you put them into water, then they turn into bases. Metal oxides make bases, so they are called base anhydrides. Non-metal oxides, oh my gosh, I totally lied to you guys. 
You know what? I should check this. Who does it? Oh, no, I would. Mm. Okay. Back to reality. No, this is true. Metal oxides are called base anhydrides. I'm not retaping this, so forget what I just said, but what I just said was true. Metal oxides are base anhydrides because they make bases when you put them in water. For instance, MgO. Not an acid or base, but when I add it to water, I get MgOH2. And so it turns into a base. So this is called a base anhydride because when you put it in water, you get a base. Non-metal oxides make acids, so they are called acid anhydrides. Hydrides. Okay, so for instance, NO2 plus H2O turns into H. NO3. I said HNO3. HNO3. NO3. One, two, three. One, two, three. Six, four, five, six. Okay. So if I put, so this is a non metal oxide because it's a non metal with oxygen. And it's called an acid anhydride because it's not an acid or a base, but when I put it in water, it turns into an acid. Okay. So this is relevant to acid rain. Look at all these gases, right? These are gases. Non-metal oxide. Non-metal. Non-metal oxide. So this is called an acid anhydride. Because when I put it into water like rain, it turns into acid. And then this, the water coming down in the rain is slightly acidic because it reacted with those acid anhydrides. Where do they come from? Cars and factories. Okay, And those acid rain things can deteriorate limestone because remember acids react with carbonate Okay, and lick it can um, turn, oops come back, it looks like it turns, um, has some effect on trees and stuff too because the pH of the ground is going to be acidic. Right? That's going to affect the leaves and stuff. Okay, so what did we learn today? Right. A titration is a technique that uses an instrument called a burette. So we use that titration to um, find out something about acids and bases. Right. So a neutralization reaction is an acid plus a base to give salts and water. Right. To calculate the titration um, information, you use this equation. Right? Anhydrides are something without water. Acid anhydride is a metal, non-metal oxide. Base is a metal oxide. Buffers control pH change, keep it constant, which it says in the next bullet point. Okay, so that's what you need to know about acids and bases. Chapter 19 helps. Can you define what a titration is and do a calculation for it using a neutralization reaction? Okay. Define some terms, acid anhydride, base anhydride. Define a buffer. Examples are buffers are in your blood. And there's an acid and a base reaction. There's an acid and a base in buffers. Okay. And then that's it. Peace out.